Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Morning vibe everybody. Morning vibe everybody. Welcome to our course, statistic course. Okay, today we are going to talk about one sample test analyzed with SPLS 21. Okay, before we go further, we need to pay attention on one sample test fundamental concepts. There are four that we need to pay attention. Number one is one sample test is also known as the t-test for one sample. And then we need to pay attention also that the purpose of one sample test is to compare the average of the sample under study with the average of the existing population. And the next the next important thing, one sample test can also be used to test hypothesis in descriptive statistics. And the last one sample test is part of parametric statistics. So therefore, here the basic assumption that must be made is that the recent data must distribute normally. Okay, I'm going to give you an example of one sample test. Okay, so let's say a researcher made a conjecture stating that the average result of student English learning outcomes in speaking for academic purpose course were active in English community club is 80 or equal to 80. So to prove this, the researcher choose randomly 12 students who were active in English community club. The average result of the learning outcomes of the 12 students is as follows. Okay, we can go to the Excel data, yeah, Excel 5 here. So I have already made the data in Excel 5 for the purpose of accuracy before we implement it in SPSS 21. So here we have 12 participants and then on the right we have the data of the scores of the average learning result from uh, 79.2 until 78. So the data taken from uh, the report book of the midterm test one. Okay. <clears throat> and the next we go to here, research data analysis with SPSS. So we have three steps that we need to follow. What is number one? Conduct a normality test to find out whether the average result of student English learning outcomes were active in English community club is normally distributed or not. So this one is the requirements for one sample test in parametric statistics. And the step number two, perform a one sample test. Yeah? So it means after we have already found that the data distribute normally, we, go, we are able to go to perform one sample test. And number three, analysis stage. It consists of input, analysis, and output. Okay, we go to perform normality test okay so we have to obey the decision based on normality test if the significant value is more than 0 0.05 so the data distribute normally but if the significant value is less than 0 0.05 so it means that the data do not distribute normally okay let's prove it we go to one sample to test. We have data view and variable view here. Okay, we start from variable view. In the column of name, we have to type result. Okay. And then in the label column, we type learning outcome result. Okay. And then the decimals. So based on the data in Excel 5, yeah, we have one decimal after comma. 
So it means that in variable view we have to type one year. But if our data doesn't have decimal, just put zero. If the decimal is two years, just right. Uh, decimals two years. Okay, we back to one, yeah. And then the next, we go to data view. Yeah, we have already got the column result here, and we are going to fill it with the data taken from Excel file. We just copy it. Very easy. Yeah, just copy it from Excel data, and then we go to SPSS twenty one data view. Uh, we choose number one here under this result and then paste. Okay, good. We have got it. And then we test. We, we do normality test. Okay, we go to analyze. Yep. And then choose descriptive statistics and we go to explore. Just click explore. And then we have the dialog box here. Yeah, learning outcomes result we we set it to dependent list dialog box just click it okay and then we click plots we click normality plots with test and then the next we click continue and we click okay okay we are going to have the output here the output of one normality test we have three output the first is case processing summary, the second descriptive, and the last is test of normality. So we have two kinds of test of normality here, Kolmo Korosmirnov and Sapiro Will. We are going to choose Sapiro Will because it is purpose for the data that is less than 50. If the data is more than 50, we choose Kolmo Korosmirnov. So, significance, yeah, we have the significance here, 0 0.337 or 0 0.337. So, from the decision, yeah, decision based on normality test, if the significant value is more than 0 0.05, so it means that the data distribute normally. So, we can conclude that uh, the data distribute normally. Because the data distribute normally, we can go to one sample defense. Okay. Before we go to the, the calculations of one sample t-test analysis with SPSS 21, we need to state the research hypothesis. So here, HO or the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis says the average result of student English learning outcomes were active in English community club is the same as 80. And then the HA, the average result of student learning outcomes were active in English community club is not the same as 80. Okay. And the next here. We must pay attention that a one sample t test have basic decisions, yeah. So the basic decisions in the one sample t test can be done in three ways, yeah. Number one, comparing the value of significant detailed here with 0 0.05, yeah. And Okay, comparing the value of significant to tails, yeah, with 0 0.05. And way number two, comparing the value of t count with t table. And last, look at the comparison or having the look at the comparison of the value of t count with t table with curve. Okay, we go to the first way of one sample t test, analyze with SPSS 21, yeah. The first way, number one here, basic decision based on significant value. So it is said that if the value of significance to tail is less than 0 0.05, so it is said that 
HO or denial hypothesis is rejected. But if the value of significance or total is more than 0.05, then HO or denial hypothesis is accepted. Okay, we need to prove it. We go to analyze. Okay, we go to analyze and then we go to compare means. We choose one sample t-test. Yeah. We have here the dialog box learning outcome results. We send it to the dialog box of test variable. Just click it. And then we go to option. Okay. We go to option to check whether the confidence interval percentage already 95% or not. Yeah, it is already 95%. Just let it default. We just click continue. And then here, test value. So, based on the hypothesis, it is said that the average of the English learning, the student English learning outcome were active in English community club is 80. So, the test value here, we just type 80. And then we click OK. <clears throat> okay, we have, we are going to find the output of one sample t test. We have two output here. The first is one sample statistics and the, sam the second is one sample test. Okay, so way number one, yeah. Significant details. We found here 0 0.168. So it is very really clear here that if the value of significant total is less than 0 0.05, then HO is rejected. Yeah, but we find here 0 0.168. So the deception here due to the value of significant details of 0 0.168 is more than 0 0.05. Then according to the basis decision making about HO is accepted. So it means that it can be interpreted that the average result of English learning outcomes of students who were active in English community club is equal to 80. So, based on way number one, yeah, the null hypothesis is accepted. Yeah. So, let's go to the next way number two. So, way number two here, the comparison of the value of the count and the tables. So, uh, the, the basic decision here said, if the value of the count is more than the table, then the null hypothesis or HO is rejected. But if the value of the count is less than the table, then HO or the null hypothesis is accepted. So, we, we have here the count, yeah? We have here the count. The T count here minus 1.5. 474. So we can say here, yeah, based on this decision uh, here, that if the count is less than the table, then HO is accepted because the count is minus 100 and 1474 is less than the table. 2,201, so the null hypothesis is accepted. So, it can be concluded that the average result of uh, student English learning outcome who are active in English community club is 80. Okay, maybe uh, some of you questions, uh, how can we find the formula, the formula for t-table? Okay, we have here the formula, ya. Yeah. 0.05, ya. Yeah. 0.05 is divided by 2. And then we have look, uh, we have to look at the DF, ya. Yeah. The DF here, we back to SPSS 21, the DF 11, ya. Yeah. So here, 0.05 is divided by 2 is equal to 0 0.025. After we have already found, uh, after we have already found that the t table is 0 0.025 with the TF11, we go to the statistical t table values. Yeah, I have the file here. Okay, so here 
uh, the statistical t table values we find t table here 0.025 with the tf11 so we found here the t table is 2.201 Okay, so once more, HO is accepted, yeah? The null hypothesis is accepted with the conclusion that every result of student English learning outcomes were active in English community club is 80. Okay, let's go to the next. Yeah? Way number three, basic decision based on the curve. Okay. We have the curve here, so pay attention to the area of HO rejection area, yeah, from here to the next. And the HO rejection area from this line until this line. And HO reception, reception area, yeah, from this line until this line. So, HO rejection area, yeah. If um, the T table is more than 2.201, so uh, HO will be rejected, yeah. And then if in here also, if the T count, T count, yeah, if the T count is uh, more than the table minus 2.201 so the HO will be rejected so here the T count is in this area ya HO reception area ya minus 1.474 here ya so the location is here so it is still in the area of HO reception Area. So it can be concluded that HO is accepted. So it can be interpreted that the average result of student in English learning outcomes who are active in English community club is 80 or the same as the score of 80. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much for your attention. I do hope that all of you will understand how to implement, how to analyze one sample t test using SPSS 21. Yeah, remember about the step, yeah, uh, do normality test and then perform one sample t test and the analysis stage, yeah. And then we, we have already got the answers that the null hypothesis is accepted. From the three ways of finding out one sample t test, it shows that the average result of student English learning outcomes who were active in English Community Club is 80. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. And you can repeat again if uh, you didn't or you missed some explanations. Yeah. So to, to upgrade your understanding about the implementations of one sample thesis in SPRS 21.